Welcome back to my little channel. Today's video is a short one and criticism, I'm going to say it up front, is more than welcome. I like to hear what you think about this one. Now, I know there are people who are going to call this racist, xenophobic or whatnot because the topic at hand is the decline of the West or rather the death of the West. And it's too easy to say it's because of group A or group B. I know, but I am going to call out a group. A group of people I strongly feel are responsible for the trouble we are in in Europe. And in all fairness, in Australia, New Zealand and America. What group do you think I'm going to call out? No, it's not, not Muslims. No, not black people. It's the politicians, the panderers who do nothing but try to prevent talking about certain things, hoping that therefore it goes away. It's not the grooming gangs in Great Britain that are the biggest problem. Oh, they're a huge problem. They, sh they should be quartered for all I care. But how dare politicians and police in the UK stand down, not enforce the laws meant to protect the people, rather than let the victims become victims, so they will not be called racist. Now, it's too easy to say, well, look at the UK and how terrible they are. But in all fairness, this is not just happening in the UK. This is happening in just about all Western countries. And whenever someone of the religion of peace commits an act of terror, he is to be a lone wolf. But obviously, all white people are to blame when a guy goes into a mosque and starts killing people there. Now, don't get me wrong, I'll call out any form of terrorism. So the white guy doing the killing is no less of a bastard than the Muslim doing the killing. The one slight difference between the two is that one of these two is trying to terrorize the greater population and the other one is responding to that. We want to stop people responding. We want to stop people going out and taking matters in their own hands. But our politicians are doing everything to prevent people realizing what's going on. They keep lying about the attacks. They keep lying about terrorism. But people are noticing this. You can't keep saying, well, yeah, no, I mean, it's, it's, it's a lone wolf. It's, it's, it's a guy with a mental disability. Because let's be honest. Whenever there is a terror attack and it happens to be a Muslim doing the deed, he's a lone wolf. He's someone with a mental disability. Yet we keep having those people several times. I mean, in the last week, both in the UK and in Belgium, we had people stabbing random people on the streets. And both of them, obviously, had mental disabilities. And what they do not realize, what our politicians do not realize, what our media doesn't realize, is that they keep saying that Muslims are then people with mental disabilities. Well, not all of them, the ones that do the killing. Can we stop with that? Now that you want to say, well, yeah, not all Muslims, you don't have to. I agree with you on that. But by preventing calling out the cause we're not helping our own civilians and we're not helping the Muslim civilians within our society because most of the Muslim civilians within our society do not want to be thought of as terrorists. They don't even want to be associated with terrorism. But by painfully trying to avoid ever mentioning it, you're telling people two things. One, the victims are meaningless and society needs to pander to Islam. 
this is creating more and more right-wing momentum. And I understand that our politicians want to stop the spread of right-wing ideologies. And with right-wing, they don't mean people who think in a certain right-wing way, because let's be honest, Islam is a very right-wing political movement. But with right-wing, they mean white supremacists. The thing is, though, they are actually feeding the white supremacist. I really wish our politicians would stop doing that. Maybe I need to call out for a renaissance. Um, that's why the image is there. And not to say all those other cultures are bad. That's definitely not what I'm saying. But we need to reestablish the value of our society. And if we want to be an open society, then sure, we can be an open society. But we need to protect ourselves from those within our society who would wish to do us harm. For if we do not, it is only the time to wait for the wrath of the awakened Saxon. Now, this is a poem by Rudyard Kipling, and it's a very strong poem. But I fear the increase in what people call white supremacy is not so much an increase in white supremacy, but an increase in resistance to the martyrdom of our own society, of our own citizens. I mean, in America, there has been a protest on the Second Amendment, and the media keeps telling that the people protesting in favor of the Second Amendment are white supremacists. Never mind the amount of black citizens in America that are protesting the Second Amendment. But the media and the politicians would rather see us against one another. Now, are there black people that are a problem in America? Yeah, sure. Are all of the black people in America a problem? No, of course not. But by preventing us talking about one bit of it, you are causing people to polarize. I'm giving America as an example. The same is happening in Europe. By not being allowed to talk about the crime waves coming from a certain religion of peace, we are causing polarization. We need to stop with the polarizing. Now, I mean, criminals should be dealt with hard, full extent of the law, maybe a little bit more than that. Maybe we should need to change our laws to be stricter even, not based on religion, but on crime. But if we're not going to allow ourselves to talk about the crime coming from certain groups, then how the hell are we going to stop it? To everyone out there, this is what Rudyard Kipling warned us about. I've given the poem in past times in my one of our live streams, but I'm going to put it here as well for each and every one to remind themselves what it is. We not only have to prevent, but also have to realize. It was not part of their blood. It came to them very late. With long arrears to make good when the Saxon began to hate. They were not easily moved. They were icy, willing to wait till every count should be proved ere the Saxon began to hate. Their voices were even and low, their eyes were level and straight. There was neither sign nor show when the Saxon began to hate. It was not preached to the crowd, it was not taught by the state. No man spoke it aloud when the Saxon began to hate. It was not suddenly bred, it will not swiftly abate through the chilled years ahead when time shall count from the date that the Saxon began to hate. Criticism is more than welcome and I hope to see you all next time.